all right what's going on everybody got another video here for you this one is on vector fields all right so let's get started so we've got the definition it says let d be a set in r2 a vector field on r2 is a function f that assigns i wrote that assigns twice didn't i I don't need both of them. That assigns to each point x, y, and d a two-dimensional vector f of x, y. Since f, x, y is a two-dimensional vector, we can write it in terms of its component functions p and q as follows. So we can write it as uh, vector function f is equal to p of x, y times i plus q of x, y times j or if we write it in, our, in the component form, p of x, y, q of x, y. Or we can write it short as the vector function f is p, i plus q, j. And notice that p and q are scalar functions of two variables and are sometimes called scalar fields to, dis, to distinguish them from vector fields. All right. And then here's just a little example, a little drawing of a, vector field you you've got your initial point here that's your point x y and then you draw your vector from that point and i'll i'll show you that when we get an example i'll go over that a little more and this these are just a few vectors drawn here all right and then we have definition let e be a subset of r3 a vector field on R3 is a function f that assigns to each point x, y, z, and e a three-dimensional vector f of x, y, z. And we can express it in terms of its component functions p, q, and r as the vector function f is equal to p of x, y, z, i plus q of x, y, z, j plus r of x, y, z, k. So it's just, you know, just like the two-dimensional, except we have this one one extra term here, this r times vector k. All right, so let's look at an example. It says a vector field on R2 is defined by f of x, y is equal to negative y, i plus x, j. Describe f by sketching some of the uh, vectors f of x, y. All right. So to do that, let's let's make a table. <clears throat> All right. So we've got a point x, y, and then we will have our vector function f of x, y. All right. So what we do is we just we'll just choose some points. So we'll just choose the point one zero. Uh, let's choose 2, 2, uh, 3, 0, 0, 1, negative 2, 2, and let's do 0, 3, and we'll, we'll plot some more. So don't let this confuse you. Notice this is our point x, y. So we've got to take the x coordinate and plug it in here for x and the y coordinate and plug it in here for y so don't get it back you know you go you plug this in for x plug this in for y so when i do that that's going to give me zero one see if i plug zero in for y that's going to be zero i plus and plug the one in for x that would be one j so i would get the vector zero one and then we plug the two in so if we plug this two in for y i get negative two and plug the two in for x i get two and then the three zero Plug the zero in for y, that would give me zero. Plug the three in for x, that would give me three. So I would get zero, three. And then you would keep doing that until you got them all. That would be one, zero, uh, negative two, two, one, 
two, and then I would get uh, negative three, zero. See, for this one, y is two, so I'll plug the two in for y, so that would be the negative two, and then I would plug the, uh, the negative two in for x. And that wouldn't be negative 2, 2. That would be negative 2, negative 2. All right. All right. So we plugged those points in and we plugged them in. And so now let's, let's just go ahead and pick some more points. Okay. And I will, I will pause the video to do that. So you don't have to sit there and watch me write all that stuff all this stuff out but it, it's gonna be it's gonna be just like what we did in the first column all right all right so now we're ready to sketch this so let's go ahead and draw this out so I've got one two three four one two three four one two three four one two three four all right so let me ha let me show you how to how to draw this so let's look at the first one here the point one zero and the vector zero one all right so the way you draw this is you go to the point okay so let's do this in a different color let's just do orange I guess so we go to the point one zero you go to your point and that's where it starts and then you draw your vector from that point that's going to be the initial point of the vector and you can see I've got the vector zero one so <clears throat> notice this first component that's your that's your x component your y component so the x component tells me it's zero so I don't move anywhere in the x direction and then y is one so that means I go up one unit and that would be that one now let's look at this one two two so from the point two two okay well notice this first component here is negative two so that means I move two units in the negative direction and the y is positive two so I move up two units and that would go to right here see I go one oh I'm not at the right point right here at two two so I would go to the left two units that's my first component so I go to the left two and then I go up to which would be to here and so that would be that vector and then we've got the point three zero x is zero so I don't move any in the x direction y would be three so I move up three units okay and then I go from the point zero one which would be right here and see in the uh, in the x direction I would move one unit okay so I I wrote that one wrong when I when you do zero one that means the zero gets plugged in for x which would be here and the one gets plugged in for y that would be negative that would be negative one zero my mistake <clears throat> all right so let's go back to that color again so uh, just be careful on this problem because it can get kind of confusing <clears throat> so from the point zero one i move negative one in the x direction but zero in the y direction so that would be to here and then for negative two two 
So let's see, one, two, and then up two. So from the point negative two, two, I would, use, I would move two units to the left and then two units down, which would be right here. Okay. And then we would just, we would continue on around. Uh, let's see, zero, three, zero, three. That would be right here. And then I would move to the left three units. One, two, three. And the Y, and the Y is zero, so I don't move any there. Okay. And then you would just, you would do this side the same. I'm not going to go through all of it. Uh, I mean, it's just like what we did for the first column. So let me fill this out. All right. And so this is what, this will, this is what we would get here. Okay. After we fill all this out and, and hopefully you can kind of see what you can see what's going on here. It, it appears that, that the arrows, each arrow is tangent to a, to a circle with center origin. You can see here. How I can draw a circle in here and see how these vectors all these vectors are tangent to that circle okay um, and then and then you can see the further out the points get see how the the circle gets larger and I know this circles not gonna look too good it doesn't look like a circle at all but it's a circle okay my my marks aren't evenly spaced so uh so we can uh, but but you can see we have a we have a circle here so let me just rewrite the function down because i want to i want to show you something else here so we, we've got our vector function f of x y is equal to negative y negative y i plus x j okay all right so like i said you can see that the that the vectors are tangent to the circle so we can convert we can confirm this by taking the dot product of the uh position vector okay so take the dot product of the position vector Okay, this right here corresponds to to any point x, y, this position vector here. All right, and we can take the dot product with f of vector x, which is equal to f of x, y. So if we do the dot product, That is going to be x i plus y j dot negative y i plus x j, and so if we do the dot product, uh, let's see what we. I think we can write it right here. That's going to be negative x y plus x j remember how to do the dot product this times this plus this times this which is what zero and and what is what is that what does that show when you do the dot product and the zero it shows that they're perpendicular right all right so that shows it shows that f of x y is perpendicular to the position vector x y and is so that so that sh that shows you that it's tangent to a circle with center of the origin and radius and the radius is the magnitude of our position vector here, which, what is that magnitude? 
that magnitude is what the square root of x squared plus y squared right there's your there's vector x that's the magnitude and then what I want you to notice here notice that the magnitude of our vector function is the square root of negative y squared plus x squared which is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared which is equal to the magnitude of vector x so the magnitude of f is equal to the magnitude of x and this is what what is this this is the radius of our circle okay all right so that, that's just kind of explaining this this vector field here and and another thing it's it's showing you how to how to plot a vector field okay uh, a, a lot of these a lot of these vector fields it's it's good to use a calculator or some graphing software because some of them get kind of get kind of complicated drawing them but the main thing here is that you know how to plot one of these vectors just just remember you plot the point okay like we did here plot the point and then this basically this zero here tells you how you move on the x-axis this one tells you how you move on the y-axis okay from that point all right so let's look at this one let's sketch the vector field on r3 given by the vector function f of x y z is equal to z times k all right so let's see what we have here all right so I can say here I, I, I don't really need to make a chart here I can say z is equal to 1 right z is equal to 1 that would give me a vector that goes one unit up right because it would be because if you look at this if z is 1 that would give me the vector what zero zero one all right and when you when you think about it does it really matter what we plug in for x and y we can plug in any point for x and y and we're going to get z to be one because i chose z to be one and so then i would have a vector here 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 they're all length one and i could say okay let z equal two and so i would have a vector from here to here now keep in mind this would be longer because from this point here that would be the vector zero zero two if i chose z to be two and so these vectors would be longer all right and you know you can you can put them over here too all right you can go on on either side and then i could say okay z is negative one and i could choose a x y point down here to start from and z would be negative one so that means it would be pointing down and then you could you know you could come here and z is negative two and those vectors they would just be longer Okay. you would have something that looks like that so that's all that that's all that is there okay it's not bad and you know just think if you had xi or yj what would those vectors look like you could probably get that from based on what we did here all right it says imagine a fluid flowing steadily along a pipe and let v of x y z be the velocity vector at a point x y z then v 
vector v assigns a vector to each point x, y, z in a certain domain e, say the interior of the pipe. And so V is a vector field on R3 called a velocity field. Sketch a possible vector field in a fluid flow. All right, so, you know, we had, we had something like this. All right, and we could just... Had something like this and you would have your your vector would come they could come out like this so this is just a one one possible one So something like that, not a very good, I mean, it's not bad, but and so it looks something like that and fluid would be flowing. All right. So that's all they're wanting you to do there. All right. So let's look at this one. <clears throat> it says Newton's law of gravitation states that the magnitude of the gravitational force between two objects with masses little m and big M is the magnitude of F is equal to little m times a big M times G over R squared, where R is the distance between the object and G is the gravitational constant. Let's assume that the object with mass m is located at the origin in R3. Let the position vector of the object with mass little m be vector x is x, y, z, write and sketch an equation for the gravitational field f. All right. All right, so, so it says we're going to let the position vector of the object with mass little m be vector x is x, y, z. So I've got vector x is equal to x, y, z. All right. <clears throat> so it says, let's see, what does it say? Where R is the distance between the object and G, and G is the gravitational constant. Let's assume that the object with big with mass big M is located at the origin in R3, and let the uh, position vector of the object with mass little m be x, y, z. And so I can say I can say that R is equal to the magnitude of x. That would be your radius. Okay. We're at the origin, right? So I've got uh, that's not vector R, that's just R. R squared is equal to the magnitude of x squared, right? All right. So write and sketch an equation for the gravitational field F. Okay. All right. So we can write that F of x is equal to the magnitude of f times what all right so we have we have the gravitational force exerted on the second object acts towards the origin okay and the unit vector in this direction would be what well x is our vector so what would be the unit vector we would divide it by the magnitude right and we're going back towards the origin, we would have a negative there. That would be minus. And so this would be what? Well, what's, what's F? That's going to be negative M T 
times mg over the magnitude of x well let's do this over the magnitude of r squared times vector times the unit vector all right so the negative that was here i just moved it out in front and this right here is coming from this okay that's f and so now we would get what negative little m times big m times g over the magnitude of x squared times vector x over the magnitude of x right because we see here we've got uh, r squared is equal to the magnitude of x squared and so that's going to give us negative m little m times big m times g over the magnitude of x cubed okay magnitude of x cubed times vector x all right all right so so that's that all right there's your there's your f now uh so this this formula here is a compact way of writing the gravitational field but we can write it in terms of its component function okay so so how would we go about about doing that well if i have so so vector x i can write that as xi plus yj plus zk right and i know that the magnitude of this is equal to x squared plus y squared plus z squared and i can take the square root of that right and so that would give me f of x y z okay f of x y z is equal to all right so let's let's make these uh substitutions here so that's going to be equal to negative negative little m big m g times x over what over x squared plus y squared plus z squared and then remember it's the square root of that right it's the square root of that because that's what that's what the magnitude of x is and then it's cubed so we can write this as to the three halves power and then that's times vector i all right so uh, ho hopefully you see where this is coming from see see this right here so remember vector x is the vector xi plus yj plus zk so i'm multiplying this see vector x i could well i wrote it down here xi plus yj plus zk and so what i'm doing is i'm taking this and distribute and multiplying it and that's where that's where this x here is coming from and then i would do it to the y and then the z all right so this would be plus negative little m times big m times g y over x squared plus y squared plus z squared raised to the three halves plus negative little m big m g z over x squared plus y squared oh and i forgot that's times vector j y squared plus z squared to the three halves times vector k and then if you went and looked at this th this would be th this would be a pretty complicated one to draw 
you might would want to uh, you would want to uh, probably do this with some software or a calculator but but these th these are going to point in towards the origin okay it would look something like this you know you would have vectors looking like this and then you know you move a little further out and the uh, something like that and just throw a few up there but but what you want to notice here is that the vectors closer to the origin are longer then and as we get further and further out the the, the vectors get smaller and smaller and gravitational force is going to be stronger the closer you you are okay to the origin and so there's that example okay all right let's look at this one it says suppose an electric charge q is located at the origin according to coulomb's law the electric force f of x exerted by this charge on a charge q located at a point x y z with position vector x is equal to vector x is equal to x y z is all right so let's take a look and see what this would look like all right so so basically what this one would be is, is this would be cubed times vector x all right where epsilon is a constant that depends on the units used and notice the similarity between this formula and the previous formula both vector fields are examples of force fields instead of considering the electric force f physicists often consider the force per unit charge all right so here and and basically what we're going to do here is is we're going to uh we're going to get a formula for e i'll i'll write all that out but what i want to show you here is um uh, what i want to show you here before we do that i want to show you that like charges imply that little q times big q is positive in other words like charges if you multiply and they have the same sign uh, that would mean the force is is repulsive and unlike charges that means little q times big q would be less than zero and that would be force is attractive all right and it says um instead of instead of considering the electric force f this is off consider the force per unit charge that uh we have e of x is equal to 1 over q that would be 1 over q times f of x which all that's going to do is what 1 over little q times this thing that would be epsilon little q 
big Q over the magnitude of X cubed times uh, vector X. And so all that's going to do is cancel those out. And so we would get epsilon times big Q over the magnitude of X cubed times vector X. And uh, E is a vector field on R3 called the electric field. All right. All right, so that's just kind of going over some stuff, giving you some formulas. And that's that's all that is. Um, let's look at this. Gradient fields, we're almost done. This section isn't too, too long. So gradient fields, if f is a scalar function of two variables, recall from section 14.6 that its gradient the gradient of f is defined by this all right so we've already gone over this this is a previous video and that's 14.6 in the stewart calculus book ninth edition i believe it's ninth edition yeah that's the ninth edition but it's it's the uh let me let, let me look and see what the name i can't remember the name of the section but i will tell you here in just a minute it's it's the section on directional derivatives and the gradient vector that's where you got that from therefore the gradient of f is really a vector field on r2 and is called a gradient vector field likewise if f is a scalar function of three variables its gradient is a vector field on r3 given by this okay so i mean it's going to be it's going to be like this one it's just that we've got our z component here All right, so let's look at this example right here. It says find the gradient vector field of f of x, y equals x squared, y minus 3y and plot the gradient vector field together with a contour map of f. All right, so we've got the gradient, the gradient of f of x, y, Oh, it's just x, y, is equal to the partial of f with respect to x times i plus the partial of f with respect to y times j. And so, well, here, here you have it. The partial with respect to x, that would be 2xy times vector i plus and then the partial with respect to y, that would be x squared minus 3y squared times vector j. Okay. And so there's your gradient vector. And then they want us to sketch this along with the contour map. You would probably want to get some software out for this, but basically it's going to look something like, it'll look something like this. Um, I mean, you know, you can pick some points, plug them in, and just kind of sketch some of these out if you want to. Uh, all right, I think it looks something like, you know, something like that. And then, you know, down here, it would go like this. We'll just kind of sketch these in real quick. And of course, you know, I mean, this is not completely accurate, but kind of gives you an idea of what we've got going here. You can speed the video up through this. I mean, drawing these, I just wanted to kind of get a picture of it. All 
all right and then we draw the contour the contour map that's where you know you you've got it you you did that in an earlier section i don't remember what section it, it was but where you would do the contour maps like i said on something like this you would probably want to use some software here to draw that all right and there you have it the the gradient vectors and i know they they probably don't look like you know look like it based on my drawing but if you got some software and drew it the gradient vectors are perpendicular to the level curves that's in red and the gradient vectors uh are are long where the curves are closer together and short where the curves are further apart so where they're closer together the vectors are going to be longer and as these level curves get further apart they're, they're going to get shorter and that's what that would look like but this right here uh, i'm showing you here how to find the gradient vector and then this would just be a picture of kind of what it looks like but like i said get you some software and graph these things i don't know if there's any calculators that do it or not but there might be all right so this is the last thing it says a vector field f is called a conservative vector field if it is the gradient of some scalar function that is if there exists a function f such that f vector the vector function f is equal to the gradient of f in this situation f is called a potential function for our vector function f so let's just let's just go back to what we looked at this this formula this uh, formula here that we have let's let's look at this and uh, and see what we've got uh, with these gradient functions let's just let's just look at this function we looked at earlier so if we define f to be this okay then let's take the let's take the gradient of this okay so that's going to give us the gradient of f of x y z is equal to so remember that's the partial of f with respect to x times vector i plus the partial of f with respect to y times vector j plus the partial of f with respect to z times vector k all right so the partial of f with respect to x all right so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to come up here this is not part of the problem well it's part of the problem but i'm not going to you might want to just go off to the side and show this work but no notice that we can write f of x y z as little m big m g times x squared plus y squared plus z squared to the negative one half right we could write it like that so if i take the partial of f with respect to x that's going to be what well the negative one half is going to come down so that's negative one half little m big m g times x squared plus y squared plus z squared to the negative three halves we subtract one times the derivative of what's inside so that's just going to be times 2x remember y and z are like like constants and so this is going to be negative see this two and this two is going to cancel so that's negative little m big m g over x squared plus y squared plus z squared raised to the positive three halves okay all right so you would go and you would do that with respect to y and then with respect to z basically what's going to change whoop i didn't write everything down did i that should i, for, 
I forgot the X right there. So basically what's going to change here is this variable here. When you do it with respect to Y, that's going to be a Y. You take the partial with respect to Z, that's going to be a Z. And so now we get, we get the gradient of F of X, Y, Z is equal to negative little m, big M, G, X over x squared plus y squared plus z squared to the three halves times vector i plus negative little m big m g times y that's a g not a six over x squared plus y squared plus z squared to the three halves times vector j plus negative little m, big M, g, times z, over x squared plus y squared plus z squared to the three halves. And this is equal to big F of x, y, z. That is your that's your conservative vector field, okay? And this, what would this be called? This is called your potential function. And we'll talk about conservative vector fields and all that stuff uh, later on in a couple more sections we'll, we'll, we'll learn how to tell whether or not a given vector field is conservative and we'll get deeper into that but that's that's about all we'll uh, go into for this video all right so uh, i hope i hope you enjoyed that uh one of the main things that you want to that i wanted you to get out of this video is finding these conservative vector fields and then being able to or understanding how to plot a vector field. I mean, some of them's going to be just be nasty, be crazy. You may want to use the software or calculator to do that. And then others like that first example, I sh we plotted one that just showed you that, you know, you pick your point and from that point that you choose, that's, how you draw your vector field all right so hope this helped check out my other videos give me a like share subscribe comment and i will see y'all in the next one later